Hey, it's been a while since I've done videos, but I'm back. We're going to look at a King's Indian Defense video today against my friend Kevin. And this is a 60 minute game plus a 30 second increment. So we start out with d4 knight f6, c4 g6. And here Kevin typically plays e6 and d5, which takes us into more of a Catalan structure. But I have seen him play the King's Indian Defense in a simultaneous exhibition against me. So I was a little bit prepared for this. d6, e4. Bishop g7, and now we see h3. I like this h3 move a lot. I've been playing it for quite a while. Uh, sometimes I play it with the knight going to f3, and sometimes I play it with the knight going to e2. Usually when my knight's going to f3, I started move one knight f3. So why play h3 here? The idea is, after black castles and plays e5, we're going to lock up the center like this. So we have these pawns all on light squares, and black's plan is to play f5. The reason for f5 is to try to target this e pawn and maybe push to f4. And you see this kind of on chain diagonal pointing at the white king side. Black wants to go for an aggressive king side attack in these positions. But the cool thing with h3 is we're actually going to play g4. And this line comes directly out of the chess goals queen's gambit course. It's a full repertoire for white. You can check out a link in the description if you're interested. But I really enjoy this line. So now we see knight to a6, the knight's heading to c5, knight g to e2. Now in the course here, we show two different lines. We show knight to d7 for black, and we show knight to c5. If the knight heads to c5, black will have two attackers on this pawn on e4, and we only have one defender currently, so then we need to play knight to g3 to bring a second defender. But if black plays the knight back to d7, um, in this case, Oftentimes we're going to play onto h4 because the knight blocks the bishop from attacking the g-pawn. So we can just actually go right ahead with the king side attack and beat black to the punch. Attack black on the king side before they can attack us on the king side. Uh, so knight e8, this was a new move to me, and I decided to stick with knight to g3. Applying an extra defender on the e4-pawn, knowing this knight will come here. But also my knight is watching over this important f5 square. So black always wants to play f5 in the king's Indian defense, it seems like, but we want to make it a mistake. And oftentimes in these h3 kids, f5 is a mistake for black and gives us a large advantage. Now here my opponent plays queen to h4, which I gave an interesting mark. The idea with queen to h4 is it blocks the h-pawn. So I'm not able to play h4, h5 and create that attack on the king side that I want. But think about what's the downside of putting the queen on h4. The big downside of the queen on h4 is she's actually misplaced here. This queen could become a target. So this whole game is going to be about how can I take advantage of black's misplaced queen. Black is taking away my option A, but he's giving me an option B, and that is try to take advantage of a misplaced queen. Um, and I had a game like this in the Chicago Open. I had a video on that one as well, where I don't think I handled it as well, but after studying that game, that's why I felt a little more prepared um, in this case. So I play queen to d2. Now there's an immediate threat here after queen to d2. I would like to play bishop to g5, trap in the black queen. There's no way out for her. So here my opponent plays f6. The idea is there's no bishop to g5, but this is actually a mistake. f6 is a mistake because this queen needs to have a route back to safety. So it might be better to play h6 here. You just want to make sure that that black queen can get back. Now I play bishop to d3. And at this point, I was having a couple deep things thinking, how can I take advantage of the black queen? I have a tricky plan in mind. I see the queen is completely trapped. She has no squares currently. How can I attack that queen? The way I can attack the queen is to take this knight on c3, bring him over to e2, bring him down to g1, bring him up to f3, and the queen is trapped. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Matt, you can't have three free moves. You can't just move your knight around while black does nothing. But it's not so simple for black to save the queen either. So here's what happens. Knight to c5. That knight is actually a really strong piece, and in these king's Indian defense structures with h3, the knight always sits well on c5. He attacks d3, he pressures e4. But there is a small upside for me my bishop could later take on c5. And that can come into play if black gets f5, f4 in, trying to fork these two pieces. Sometimes it's handy to be able to just trade off the bishop and open up other lines. Okay, so knight's on c5. The knight is attacking my bishop on d3. 
And I like the bishop because it helps guard this f5 square. So when black plays f5, my bishop is there ready to help out. I play bishop back to c2, preserving that bishop. Bishop to d7 played. And I think at this point, it's actually kind of hard to find a good plan for black. My plan, though, straightforward. Just like we looked at, the knight's going to route all the way up to that f3 square. So here it goes. Knight c to e2. And I think black maybe missed my threat here. He played b5. And this move is sort of a dynamic move, trying to create counter chances. He sees that my king might be going to the queen side, so he's trying to discourage that with a quick b5. I think a better plan, though, here is to play pawn to h6. And the reason h6 is good is because if I go for this same queen trap plan, knight to g1, now there is f5. I don't have bishop to g5. And knight to f3 doesn't help because the queen drops back. So even though I would say white still has a pretty nice advantage here, material is still equal, nothing's off the board yet, and black is definitely in the game. Nothing got trapped. So let's go back to the game line with b5. Here I took the pawn. Um, I could play knight g1 as well. Both of those are strong options. a4 by black, and he's really trying to discourage me from putting my king over on the queen side. And I think that's something that black does a good job of in this game. He is trying to focus on my king's safety. He doesn't want my king to feel safe on g1 or c1. And I can say during the game, that's true. I didn't feel safe going either direction. I had to keep my king in the center and look for other ways to play this position. Knight to g1. Now this move is almost unstoppable. Um, the best plan for black, according to the computer, is to play f5. And after bishop to g5, bishop to h6. It's a really weird line, uh, but the idea is this bishop pins my bishop to the queen. So if I take, take with check, king takes, and now black can play f takes g and try to spice things up this way. I am up a piece though. Black is going to probably have two pawns in return. So let's see what happens in the game. This is the move that I expected, and this is what was played. Bishop takes g4. So grabbing the two pawns this way, and it is tough to crack Black's position. His pieces are all pretty solid, and I do still have to focus on the king's safety. So I play knight to e2. Queen retreats. Knight to c3. So I'm defending this pawn. I'm trying to limit counterplay as much as possible. So when you have an advantage on the board, you always want to keep things calm. Don't give your opponent those chances to come back. Don't make the game too crazy. And from the flip side, Black here wants to make the game crazy. He needs to get back into it. So here he goes, f5. This threatens f4. And he's not allowing me to calm down the position. So I take, take, and knight h5. So the idea with knight h5 is I'm attacking this bishop, which points all the way across the board. That's a strong piece for Black. And I'm also opening up the g-file. So I'm trying to create some counterplay myself. You know, Black has more activity for the meanwhile. I'm trying to create my own activity, but I'm also looking to maybe trade down pieces as well. I might take on g7 with the knight. Rook to f7 played. Queenside castle. I do think my king is safer than black's, so that's something to keep in mind. Can I keep my king safer than black's here while he's going for counterplay? Knight f6, and now black is ready to trade off my strong knight. So here I decide to take the bishop because I think that's the more valuable piece for black was helping to defend the king, and it was also a good attacker. So rook takes back. I take on c5 now, finally. Bishop for knight. And look at the black pawn structure. There's one, two, three, four pawn islands for black. My pawns are a little bit funky as well, but I think the fact that black's pawns are all over the place makes it difficult for him to find a good way to come back in this position. So now what I'm thinking is, okay, yes, trading down is a good plan, I could play like rook d to g1 as well, try to just bring pressure to the king side. But I was thinking, can I have something happen quickly in the center and play with the attack? And that's why I went for d6 here. I'm not playing passive. I'm trying to grab the initiative, and I want to make a pass pawn. I have b and d pawns running up the board. Queen to e6 played, and now I take on c7. Connected pass pawns. These pawns are running, and I might be looking at queen to d8 threats sometimes. So rook to e8 played, and I take on a4. Here queen to d8 would be a good move. I could play that in this position, uh, but I decided to play a little more solid. Just taking this pawn on a4. This is defended. 
this pawn could be captured. Rook takes c7, but then I'm going to play b6. Pawn attacks that rook, and bishop attacks the other rook. So Kevin did not play that. He played rook to d7. Now I play queen to g5 check. So I'm looking to play active. I'm not trying to just passively win this game. I'm trying to stay balanced. Can I play active? Can I trade off pieces? Can I get rid of attackers? And can I limit counterplay all at the same time? Rook to g7 played. Queen back to e3, threatening to pick up the c-pawn. So remember my queen was on d2, and that rook was on g7, so he repeated back and forth. I moved my queen out, but I found a slightly better square, e3, to attack this pawn. Rook to g4 played, and this is kind of one last attempt. Black wants to take on a4, knight takes back, and then queen takes a2 as a way to open up my king. But I calculated what would happen, and I decided I can go for this queen takes c5. He did play it, rook takes a4, knight takes, and the position is sharp here, but the problem is black only has three pieces to attack, and this king is wide open, so that makes it very difficult to generate any good counterplay. He played knight to e4, um, his clock was getting a bit low, and I found queen to d5, forcing the queen trade, and black resigned. The key thing to note in this game is that when you have a misplaced piece early on, whether it's a bad bishop or a queen that's out in the open that's about to get trapped, sometimes you can formulate your whole game plan around trying to get to that trap piece. So I think that's the biggest takeaway from this game. We saw the queen misplaced early. Can we formulate a game plan to get after her? Um, so I'm going to show you a link to the playlist that has our full Queen's Gambit course. So check that out over here. And please subscribe to the channel and check out our Queen's Gambit course in the description as well. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.